Amen. 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 Can we be on our feet? I know it is cold. People are tired. But please, if you are not really going towards the emergency ward, please let's just stand up. And we are going to. Let's pray a bit. <laughs> it's going to Our Father and our God, we thank you very much for bringing us here. It's a pleasure to be before our God and our King. Every time we come here, we know that we are going to get something wonderful for the physical, for the spiritual. God, we gather here as one people and we say, God, take control, take control of everything that we are going to do here. We present in front of you, Lord, your servant. We pray that, Lord, give him wisdom, give him knowledge, give him understanding. Lead him in a way that, oh Lord, tomorrow this church shall be multiplied a hundredfold in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Yeah. 
See his glory all over. See his glory all over. See his glory all over tonight. Father, we praise your name. Tonight, come and glorify yourself. We praise your name. Tonight, I want to take this opportunity to thank you so much. If you are watching me on Facebook, I want to say thank you so much. This is Pastor Isaac, the servant of the Most High God. I have come your way tonight. I want to pay particular attention as we run up our studies on improving, having money, uh, money management tips, how to improve our financial uh, responsibilities. Thank you. Now, tonight, I want to say thank you for coming. I appreciate your time with me again. Uh, we have solid ministers of God in our church here, Pastor Bright, very solid uh, Bible teacher, Pastor Prince, great servant of God, Mama Grace, also with us. And as a result of that, we also, when we talk about uh, uh, gospel, um, our minister here is unique. For the entire North Dakota, he just allowed our two to go and say, it looks like he's taking over the entire North Dakota. We just want to say that we are grateful to God. You and I are very happy to have all this seven oh. I promise by God's grace, I live here on the 1st of February. Um, I will be gone for four to six weeks. But while we have this awesome men and women of God here in our church, let's continue to submit to them and, and also encourage them as they keep on doing this. Again, there are certain things that may not fall in your laps, but we are taking the pieces of every now and then our board of directors or the church board is doing everything to make sure that everyone is uh, settled in other words to make sure we satisfy everybody that are in our church so continue to work with us and be in church every single Sunday if it's possible unless it is very important that you cannot make it you cannot make it but if it is do whatever you can to show up above all Invite as many as you can 
Every one of you will know we work. And our work that we do, the work we do, are involved, more involved with people. And if you deal with people, it's an ability to invite them. In a week, how many people do you come in contact with? Um, you may end up coming in contact with about almost a thousand people, if I'm not mistaken. And out of all these hundreds of people you meet, how many of them did you actually invite to church? It's not just left for uh, Minister Adibar to run around because he's an evangelist for church, so he has to do all of that. Let's all get involved and let's fill that church up. This Sunday we were limited. Some of the chairs were completely empty. I wasn't happy. We want to make me happy also. So when I go to heaven, I can give very good account of whatever I use my time for. Is that why, sir? Is that true? Pastor Bright, thank you so much. You are taking some last week. God bless you uh, for whatever the Lord gives you to do. I, I heard that was few of them there, but we thank God you went and affected their ministry. Tonight, also want to bring to your attention here. Everybody is waiting for this program. If you are here tonight, I go. Those that are not here, fine. But every one of us here, we are all going, including the rest of the yeah. family. So you can leave very small and come and ask them. <laughs> we are all going. Because I want to make sure when my happens, everybody comes. So I'm doing somebody's home. My mother is very old. Any time she can be called. This is called a blue and fuller, and I want everybody to come. So when I talk about their own big, and I'm talking about my own very big, you know, this is my one happy to talk when they talk. <laughs> you see how I am smart, I mean? Yeah, that's what I'm telling Pastor. Pastor, Pastor the mother is very old, you know. And me too, I am young as a father. We are not dying today, that's why he's not too old about it. <laughs> Amen. Okay, thank God. I have talked about a lot about this subject. Eske, are you with me? Don't go to sleep on me. Um, and tonight, I'm going to run it up. Sunday, I went through a lot with you. There was a lot of questions that were coming in this last Sunday. But unfortunately, there was no time uh, to answer those questions. And if you have those questions for me today, I will appreciate that. I will take them as we go. If you do not understand anything, please it is time to ask me those questions so that we all can get out of here. But we mentioned, I'm going to ask questions from you and then take it from there. Then you also ask me if you have any. Now, we I did talk about seven point money management tips to improve your financial goal. Okay. I talk about track your spending to improve your finances. Number two, create a realistic monthly budget. Is that right? Okay. Number three, build up your savings. Even if it takes time, build up your savings. Even if, even if it's going to take forever, do. Say, so pay your bills on time every month. So if you are here, you are not paying for your car, no notes, you are messing it. It's not good, it's not going to help you. Cut back on your carrying charges. In other words, there are certain things you don't need in your home. And you are still paying for them every day. Cut back those ones. Then number six, you say save up cash to, aff to aff be able to afford big purchases. In other words, there are certain expenses if you don't handle them well, um, you will end up, you will have to borrow, and it's not too good to borrow. Can you, are you guys listening to me in the back there? Are you sure? If, if I see you guys looking at your phone, I will ask you. <laughs> I know one, sometimes, oh no, 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 I'm okay with you on that, but sometimes you see that you see somebody's going out of the way, by the time you know he's not there. Because what I'm doing tonight, again, all this, Thing that I'm teaching is free and it's money. You understand that you are called to teach, talk about them, and then they pay you pretty good money. By the time I have done in three days uh, teaching on this one, if I don't make, I'll make over five thousand dollars just three days. I'm not kidding. I'm not. I am. I am. I'm, I'm sacrificing everything to make you do well. 
if you know what I intend to do, you will be sure. You understand? We, this church is surrounded us around here. And if every one of you do well, it gives me the credit. And that is why I'm doing everything to put money in your pocket. I'm not kidding. So that if money is in your pocket, <laughs> Amen. Okay. So I have, and then the last one that I'm going to stress on a little bit before I answer questions from all over the place is that start an investment strategy. I did talk about this last Sunday. That is why I finished up. So I'm done. Next week, I'm going to show you, maybe I'll talk a little bit about children. It looks like almost every one of us, we all have children. Those of you that don't, you use that as a point to make. Um, how we can set our children up. This is very important, and I think it is time, especially the youth. Emmanuel, we are you having fun here? And, and uh, we will talk about it if your father can come in by next week or your mother. Maybe they will use that opportunity to help you out. There are certain people, the age where they are, you can't control them. Uh, some of you, you can be controlled. And not just for the children, even for we adults. One of the people that has very good credit is Auntie. Auntie has very good credit. And you know how she had a very good credit. She came and met her daughter here, Mama Gerardi. And Gerardi didn't have good credit for some reason. But Auntie survived having good credit. And today, you ask her why does she have good credit, um, she will tell you. Her company. Uh, she will tell you that uh, she went in a different direction. In other words, someone somewhere else asked her and said, Listen, let's do your credit. The person added her into her account, her bank account. She has, it's, a, it's okay, I'll call you call it a uh, bank account. It's credit account. The credit account was said that the person has have a credit card. Okay, I have a credit card. My credit card is with uh, Discover, oh, please. right? And not Discover. Bless you. Which one is your? You know, you have one. I mean, yes, it's still a credit card. I mean, okay, so I have one with Capital One. Now, okay, so this one has 15,000. That's the, what they give on this card. This one has 5,000. So what Auntie did was that the person that owns it, this is Isaac account. Okay, so what Auntie did was that Auntie had a very good relationship with Isaac. And then this is uh, decided to help her. She went and my credit account, I owe $15,000. Then as I took her there and said, this is my friend, my daughter, my baby girl. Added to my credit account, so they wrote her name with her. The two of us began to share this 15000 I said they should give her 3000 out of my 15000 now she's using the money in her credit card. The more, I have a credit score of 700, that is me. And she had absolutely 350 to start with. Because she's working with me, my is doing very well, and she's also doing very well. So she came up to 500, and she went to 600. If you look at it now, she has almost seven, 670. She's almost catching up with me. She just lived with us a few years ago. This is about three years now. It looks like your life is in my power. Is that right? I know a bit about you. Okay, so tonight we won't talk a lot about Madam Frida. I'm going to talk about a few things that can boost your account. Let me bring this to your mind. I realize that you can test, take your test, DMV test online at home, in your, the comfort of your house. 
you don't have to go to the DMV and do the writing test or the computer test. You have a laptop, you do it at home. I practiced it myself yesterday just to make sure it is correct. Truly, I was able to go through and get it done. I went through everything. Because I already have license, I didn't do the test. But I was ready to pay $10 and let it go. So that when I come in, I can pay you the information. So when our children are ready to do it, they don't have to go. They have to sit, they sit at home. You see, she's happy. Yeah, it's true. You will do it, then you do the paperwork. You carry it to them. Yeah, you carry it to them and then kind of help you. So for each and every one of you, it is very important that you have advantage of that. This is good. It is not bad. You do it your own self. And again, nobody can do it for you. If someone tries to do it for you, they will find that the computer is going to capture your picture. How you are doing it, it will be taking a record of what you are doing. So you can't have him come and sit and wait for you. You will be out of there. Uh, you will be disqualified. It will shut you down. All right, thank you for all of this. Tonight, I'm going to answer questions. If anybody has a question on Facebook, you can ask me. Um, the media guys will do their best read the questions and we'll try to answer them. What is your question for me? Yes, go ahead, man. Go oh, sit down, please. Yes. she asks, if you look at the seven point, where will you find that? Quickly, I read through them. We all went through them. Yes, Mama, can you, you see them there? What number will you find that? Not number two. What's that place? Where is it? Build up your savings even if it takes time. That's number three. Okay, so uh, your question is very simple. There is no time limit as to how you save. Okay. Truly, if you are, if you are, you are going back to uh, Frida, she makes 25, okay? Her expenses is 21, 400, okay? She is done at the end of the month. This is income. And this one is what, Anna? Expenses. Okay? So she's spending this, but she has only this. So you realize that what you are saying is free the account. She do not have much coming home. You look at it and say, look, look I, have a, I have debt to pay. I have collected loans already and I am paying all those loans. So you realize you are working to clear all of those loans. And you have children that you live with, two, three of them. You can't leave them and work three jobs or two jobs. So you are limited to one. Still, you can save money. Nobody's going to rush you. How much do I have here? Yes? Is it 3,600? Okay, that's what you have for the entire year. Then if you have two children, go and file taxes. At least you will make another 8,000 right there. Hey, you won't make that much? I don't know. Nah, I will tell you why you should and make that much. And how much you pay. by the end of the year? You see where that, I catch That up? means okay. how much tax you get. Thank you. I have not gotten a tax of 8,000. It's because I will explain to you. You see how it comes in. Those people that work too much, you can't make that. If, that's it. So if you make this amount of money, you should be able to get this done. 
Uh, that's I'm teaching based on this number, and it is accurate. Go ahead and talk to your uh, tax person and say, listen, I have two children, two to three children. Remember, we have three children at home. We use them as, I use all of this as an experiment. So, if you make, if you make 50,000, okay, if you make 50,000, and you file with the two children, you are going to lose. You may not, you may make about $2,000. I'm not kidding. It, yes, possible you may not even get that, because already, this is too much. The government is saying you are paying too much money. Again, some of you, when you, you are writing or you, you are applying for a job, you claim, you claim three, you claim one, you claim yourself, this is you, you claim your wife, you claim your two children, you claim all this money, you want to chop them, you can't eat your eggs and have them tomorrow. So you claim zero. The government to take Uncle Sam, it takes so much money from you when you claim zero. But at the end of the year, you are going to get it back. So, if Frida works this way, and Frida has two children to file with, I promise you, especially with the comment that came in, every child stood for $3,000. Is that true? Excuse yes. me, Pastor. Yes. You know, I was getting to hear an influence from the money, the COVID relief got over the year that was given to us was meant to be paid back. It is, it's what? It's meant to be paid back. No, don't because tell you. Because, you know what? Like, <clears throat> anybody that tells you the COVID money is paid back, they don't know what they were doing. I tell you now. Hear this. I don't know what they were doing. You because still will never. You have to do taxes. You don't. You get the tax. Um, yes. child the child credit is what she's talking about. Now talking about the five hundred dollars for every child. Uh, yes. It will never be paid back. It will never. So why did they not give money that nobody's asking them to give? Hey. <laughs> I think if you look at that money that was given, every child, the first money was is it six hundred they were giving? Was it six hundred for every child? That paid. Then another five hundred. Is that right? Then after this money was given, then they started giving every child how much every month? Two hundred. Two fifty or two hundred. Hey. Two fifty for time, right? Okay. So it, it, it is true. It is. So you see the incentive here. None of this is will be paid back. Absolutely zero. It is given to you for free. The government of America gives other countries free money. When the COVID came, they gave Ghana some of money. Some of them went to Cameroon, Liberia. Every country depended on the US. And then the United States saw that people that live here with the companies that are booming their economy needs help. So they sent out billions. To be given out. When they started the program, was it trillion? I think it's trillion. Let's cancel this one and write trillion. And it's true. Companies were collecting money, they were giving so much money out. Now, the thought about for those of us that does a lot of accounting says that uh, there's going to be an inflation. It's too much money in the economy. And truly, Certain things, the price of certain things are going up just because of that. But whatever America is doing, they know. If you carry 200 to your grocery store now, you only have between six to seven items. And the money is gone. Yes, so they give, they find a way to collect them back. That's a smart country. And it is, it is good if they do that. Sometimes if they are trying to show you how they can give and how they can take back. It's only God that when he gives, he doesn't take back. Go ahead. Yeah.
This is question and answers time. If you have a question, throw the My sister is asking a very intelligent, smart question. She's been living on her savings, and suddenly something happens, and that is called an emergency. Nobody's about accident. Accident comes your way when you don't expect them. For example, you have a vehicle, and you get into an accident, it's down. And the insurance policy on the vehicle is liability. You have to go ahead and buy another vehicle. You can't be walking around. If a friend decides to pick you up back and forth, let him do it at most two weeks, your friend will give up. He will start to pick you one, two, three days. The rest of the other days, he's going to be late. He's going to continue to come late, come late to tell you you need to get your own vehicle. If you get late at work three times, they will fire you. So it becomes an emergency. You need to go and buy a vehicle. You need that money to go. So your question is emergency. Now, I have a situation here. They called me at home and said, listen, this situation, your mother is sick. The doctors are collecting a huge amount of money for surgery. You need to send money home. How are you going to handle this? Is that your question? Yes. And then, if you send them home, uh, yes. how will you rebuild it? How can you rebuild it? There are several ways to improve your finances. And improving your finances, you must accept to cut off certain things in your life. Cut them. Cut them. It is very painful when you are dealing as a person. You come to a point you don't have money to show. If you don't have money, you go sick. If there's no money, husband and wife, they don't look face too good. When there is no money at home, there is no peace at home. Money is a savior. When it is it's available at home. When there is money, it means you can see love. Are you understanding me when there is money? Because if you tell me you love her and you cannot demonstrate, you prove it. You can't demonstrate it. That means it's not good. No child help me. If I have money and mama asks me for money and I don't give, that night I will go hungry. And you and I understand that very well. No food in the house, I will go hungry. I'm not talking about that kind of food, Pastor Chris, you know. Okay, so it is important that there's money. So you always create an atmosphere. Why are we talking about safe money? Many of us, our challenge today is that when we make money or when we get paid for the week, okay, I get paid $2,000 this week. Last week, which is week two, the same amount. Week three, the same amount. Week four, the same amount. If you look at this, sir, your point to make is that every week I make 2000 So if I spend this 2000 the following week I'll have another one. I don't care about this one. Does that, that make sense? So you go, you waste another one. Then this one comes in, it's also gone. This one comes in, this we call this one is gone because the week three is coming in. Another one will come. I'll use this to pay my rent. You live life like that. When it is time for rent, you, this one too will be gone because it will be gone. You have trained your life to live on the next paycheck. Are you understanding me? You are not thinking about the future. So when you make the money, they go, they leave you right out. Never plan that way. Femi, you are going to struggle to be able to face challenge when they come your way. 
the next place, only place for you to go to is one maid. Or net credit. And these things are killers. Uh -huh. This one is a killer. This one is an arm robber. <laughs> They kill quickly. And again, it is easy to find that credit. Even if you don't want them, they will come to you. And when they call you, because your credit is good, they find ways and means to know your credit is good, some of them. And when they do, by the time they call you, you are in need. So you give them what you want. It's because you're not planned. Here it is. Why is it that we are broke every time? One of the things that kill our finances is unnecessary expenses. We are not to buy everything. We go home, we send money home. Do you know that the same God that kept you while you were back home with your family and took care of you when he came in, even with your own family, that same God will take care of them even if you don't send all them all the money. I'm a family man, I have family in Ghana. My brother is my best friend. We have four boys, one girl. But the one that my soul linked up to is him. When I was a student, when I was very young, came down from Nigeria, 1990, 89, 90. He worked. He helped me. When he's going to town, or to market for work. He was dealing with provisions to the market to sell. By the time I wake up to go to school, he would drop some money for me. He did that for some time until he realized he's going out of pocket. Watch this. This house, I need this one. And he needs it. This one, he clean this and he needs it. When he came to my tent, when things are not good for him, the Lord brought me on his way. Sometimes we thought that he never stopped appreciating, and that's one good thing about it. He appreciated every day of his life. He looked at himself and said, thank you. And I give glory to God because I'm able to do it, not because I'm doing it. It's God that gave me that ability to do it. I have to step up for him. I'm going somewhere. Now, I realized that to give him money for business, it will be hard because of his situation. So I trusted God and said, I'm going to make sure he comes to the United States. Do I send him money again? I don't. I have crossed it. So as far as his life is concerned, this one, hello, are you understanding me? He's crossed out. Listen, America is not life, but it gives you many chances to make life happen. Never forget, don't take it for granted. Our children, when they hit the age of 13, 14, 15, you can give them a part-time job, let them go to school, let them do medicine, let them do law, so that they can help us. We don't have that chance now, but they can, we, but let them work and show them how to make money and get them. So I cross this because this is not in my way anymore. What is in my way still is my mother. And whoever takes care of my mother becomes the thing. Last time I told you, we are three in abroad. So one month I carry responsibility. The following month he takes the responsibility. The next one, the one in the UK takes responsibility. You see how easy it becomes on us. That is how it should be. It must not be you only. If you have four brothers and one of them are in the US and only you want to carry it on your shoulder, you can't handle it. I am, have a wife with three children, including Pastor Prince will be five. Oh, oh come on now. You, come on now, yeah, he's the first son. Hello. <laughs> 
So you realize that um, he's, he's a big boy, so I don't do what I have to do. He's out of the way. But the, next, the little ones that are coming in are also becoming So I cannot continue to spend so much. So instead of sending so much money, break it down. Some of us, we show off. Even if we don't have it, we want back home for them to know that we are bogus. I, I'm not around. <laughs> so we want to send them and let them know it is good. No. No matter what you give them a month, give them $500 every month. No, not that. They will never appreciate it. When something happens to you tomorrow, they will tell you you are a fool. You don't know the other person. You go to your children and tell them your father was a stupid person. He could not help himself. They help you. It's, you can never have, have, afford it. So the key there for your life is that you try to do your own. Try to save. When you save, you don't let them know you are saving too much. If you start building a house, they will know. Some of us will build and we let Emmanuel build for you. Emmanuel is back home. So Emmanuel, please don't let them see. I promise you they will find out. At least give them two, three months, uh, three years, they will find out. And whoever is canting and cooking, they will cook you, uh, uh, sorry. They will cook you and, and, and finish everything for you. So, but when you keep it to yourself here and you build yourself here, because since I have come to US, I'm going to make sure my wife come with me. My two children or three children will also come here. When I file for green card, I'm filing for green card, I will put all my four children on there. They are my number one priority. Let me have about two, three years. Let it delay. They're going to come anyway. So I secure. So why don't you secure here before you bring them? You are building a home today for them over there when they won't stay in and sleep in there. Then your brother in laws and sister in laws, they don't even know you too well. They are going to stay in there and enjoy. And when they are doing it, even if they will clean for you, it is good. When you go, you can't go back and sleep in there. They won't pay. They won't pay light bill. You have to go and pay again. Hey, it will bring problem. <laughs> but truly speaking, it is good to build. But you must have a good plan to build. Any question? Go ahead. Please, which one is better? Is it a savings account or an investment? Oh, thank you. I'm a person. <laughs> that was what I was doing. Uh, okay. Savings account at the bank, that is the only place you can put it. It is good, it's not the best. Savings, good, but not there. For Joy and Jackie, it is good for them. For our youth, it's, it's okay. But for me, it's not the best. But even if you cannot do investment, you want to do savings. If you cannot do investment, you want to do savings. You cannot. Which one is investment? That's correct. Investment means you carry your money into something that can give you money. So that while it is there, it is giving birth every day. It is giving birth every day. It is giving birth every single day for you. There are so many investments that can be put down. Some of them, depends, depending on the money you want to invest in, there are shares that people do put their money invest in. I have my own. Even if I don't do it, I do Bitcoin. I know some people have given up on them, but I am still enjoying every bit of it. I love to go in there and see my money every day. If I tell you how many times I check, of course. You can touch. No, no, no. This one. No, no. 
Okay, there is a point in making that. If, um, she's asking a question. Some some of the investment you put your money, you can't carry it up. Your 401k at your workplace, if you are taking it out, they are crying. Eh? If you take it, you have to take this percentage, you'll be taken out of your account, and all of that. This is a killer. They are all killers. You know what they do with your money? They put your money in Bitcoin. They put your money in here, and when you are taking it, they don't want you to take it. So they say, pay tax. Then they say uh, percentage. When they cross you with all this one, you will leave the money there for them. Then when you are taking them, even if you agree, they say, okay, he's going to take, divine, God bless you, thank you for your time. They are going to give you headache before they give it to you. It may take about one week, two weeks before you get it. And I need money to do my mother's funeral tomorrow. They are telling me if I can get the money two weeks, three weeks, forget it. So there are so many investments, but again, they are there. If not, go with savings. That is, if you open two bank accounts, one is checking and the other one is savings. Yes. Daddy, um, so my question would be, there are people who give up like keeping money and they use that money as self-investment, education. Um, what do you say on somebody like forcing, taking up one job, forcing the other job, and taking up school as the investment for that year? Because education, I don't know if education would be considered as an investment for, for um, Okay, your question says that is it good to be in school? Education is the best tool in the world today. You cannot do well without education. Knowledge is a big power. With the wisdom God gives you, you can make it. I will tell you that going to school, investing in school is good, but you must be smart what course you are taking. You cannot take any course and waste money on them. There are so many, many people in school that are not taking good courses. All the courses they are taking are junk. They go to school for three, four years. Based on the kind of course they take, they are not good. They are not going to help them. I wouldn't advise you to go to school that you know you can't find a job. And again, there are so many for the youth today. There are good courses. This this city, there is an oil refinery across the street, right in Manda. They pay pretty good. The less they pay is about $38 an hour. More than the less. What the less make, truly speaking. That is to start. This is $38 an hour is to start. But you can never get a job. Why? Because they expect you to go to school. Or you go you study that course after you are done they want you to have a little bit of experience anybody that go to that company they are right there when you go to this job there nobody leaves sir you and i if they hire us today you will never leave until we retire the only person that go into such a job let him and go to school school and get a job there he stays there he's 18 years old now, almost there. And he gets to work for about 12 years. He finds a girlfriend, and the girlfriend says, come on now, this place is too boring, too cold. Let's move. He messes up his opportunity for life. You find a job there. Every six months, they give you a big raise. You went there, by the time you finish that five, 10 years, you are already settled for life. This is all your time. How are we educating our children? On what field are we placing them? So, you go to school. While you go to that school, you do what is called engineering. You'll be sitting at the office just pressing your lap, computer on your lap. Just, just do that, and you're getting what you need. If you are at my age, I mean, I can't go back to that one. So, you and I, we are locked up. 
No, we can't do it. But comfortably, SK can do it. Richard can do it. They take it on themselves and go to school for about three years. Okay, only three years you do it. <laughs> you see, the key factor about some of these things that we struggle with, with your question, is that we don't know the importance in education. Again, knowing good field, you should educate yourself. What you do, the work you do, I jealous you already. It is good. Don't take it for granted. You build a resume for yourself. Your focus is one day you are working in the government office. And they said that, you know, yes, of course, they are there. So improve yourself. Any other question? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, she's lifting her hold on, she's asked to meet her, but I want to take from many other places. Okay, go ahead. So, um, one thing I know about the can actually boost your resume. If you bring a conference to this church, that people should pay $500, half of this church will show up. Even a free conference, that will help them grow their minds. I work at, a, I work at an organization that we work with people who, who's, who, who are discriminated against housing. My job has asked me to bring a conference to this church, paid by them to teach people about their rights as buyers, as renters. Most of us, when we leave, half of the apartments we live in, they end up not reimbursing the money you pay for. They are the two sitting right in front of us. But if I set a date and I say there's a conference, everybody will go to work. And you lose $600 in the next year that is coming when you're moving out of your apartment. So that's that's like, it's exactly what that has been saying here. That's an investment losses. It's money free, you had to gain free knowledge to save that thousand dollars. But you went to work, work a hundred dollars. I am, and I am saddened by what you just said. When I look at you, it looks like every one of you here, you haven't come to us for two years, but every one of you here. Maybe I would say it right now. Just us. But observe it, including uh, my family and my sister there. But, um, I cry every single day what she said. I do offend you. It is so killing that you move into an apartment so decent as you are. You leave the apartment for a different place. They tell you your security deposit. Listen, you can't do anything about it. You are anything. There is nothing you can do about it. They take this money. I've cried over this many, many times. Why? Because I have lived here almost 20 years now. And I'm still struggling until I purchase my own home. You fight, you call them. You talk to them. Come check. They will come in. They will, ah, this one. Ah, no, no, no. Ah, ah, this one. No matter what you do, your thousand dollars is gone. When you are moving into a different place, they say bring another room for down payment. 
Sister, if you can bring them, nobody will listen. Please, I will listen. No. Is that not what they do? Pastor Prince, is that not what they do? This is a way. So if I have cried over that, I said to myself, when can we finish this? I almost took somebody to court. Why? I don't know how to handle it. Is it possible? You didn't clean your carpet, so I have come to understand whether you clean carpet or not, they take your money. Forget it. So for you that don't know, I will beg, if the opportunity comes for you to listen, search, come and listen, write things down, connect yourself and target the next year. They have a place that they call small courts, whatever. They handle this of course. Put the court to bad good. Listen, it is very important. So man, if the opportunity comes, Pastor Prince, please embrace it. I may not be here, but when it comes in, in place, give them the opportunity to fellowship. Nobody will listen. You go to their houses, knock at their door, and bring everybody. He said, If you are not coming, you just put them in your own vehicle and backfire by force. Divine multiplication. I mean, whether they like it or not, we will force them. Let them come listen. Amen. Yes, ma'am. same time there are thieves running around <laughs> trying to get everything you want. Today was an example when mama called for Amazon. She has purchased a couple of things and you know uh, she called them to by the time she knows somebody is asking for bank information and all that. She knew where they were going. She said you guys are thieves. He said no. He said okay let me see. When they do one two three she cleared everything up. She's going to the bank, check her bank account to make sure whether she's been handled. Thieves are all over in this country. What they do is that they are able to rob even the federal banks. Mm -hmm. America itself, the treasury, they go there and collect how much. How much more your money? They will carry out the box. But it is good to ask questions. 
if you have somebody that has depth understanding, I won't say that I do. I have knowledge on some things. I know some people call to ask me before they do certain things. And I tell you yes or no. I'll give you my mind, but you go and choose which one you want. I have programs that brings me here there. I remember last year, 2021, I set up a project. I said from January to December, I want 100,000 from some people. I choose about 10, 12 that I wanted to work with. But for some reason, they couldn't come up to the point. I think I had about three, four that were able to raise. The rest of them could not come to that point. I had a big plan for them, but it's always hard to find committed people that can easily sacrifice a little bit to get to their next level. I will tell you what, saving is good at the bank. How much, how much money are they going to give it to you when you give them 50000 How much do you need? It is too bad even to watch them give you 0 0.2 cents in your account. It's a killer. They use your money and invest, then they bring you a token. It is too painful. Hear me. As your pastor, for you to grow this year, lend whatever you can, whatever you can. Lend your two bank account, the checking and the saving, rotate them well, balance and what has to go to the savings, drop it there, and begin to work it out. There are certain businesses that are on sale for today. They are selling them. The bank will give you money. That is where you have a credit card. You said you have 40000 It's amazing to have that 40000 Don't let them take it from you. Keep it. Don't abuse it. Then, after that, that becomes a point. So when you have, you are buying a, a company for one billion, okay, one billion, okay, and they are asking you, any company you want to buy, the bank will ask for 20%. So if you look at this, you are looking at 200,000. If you and I was to put our heads together, we'll be able to do, do it. If the five of us want to do it, wouldn't it make it more easier? When we do it, we are not going to just base on, it's a business we have raised. Does that make sense? We are raising a company, but this is not something that our, our mind, our soul is going to base on. We are still going to do whatever we're doing, and this is going to produce. Instead of allowing other companies and the banks to use your money, and put the money in the profit to their pocket, you have said something that, that is bringing you money gradually. You may not be able to do this right away, but if you have a good credit, like Femi has good credit, Gerardi has good credit, you come to a point of knowing that we are going to the bank. They will give us, they will only offer me 100,000. They will give you 100,000. This one, they will give it. We we'll put it together, we will buy whatever we want to, and we are good to go. You know the percentage they will put on the loan we collect from them. It's not going to be too much. It's going to be about three, four, five percent. It will make money easy. It is hard for people to work. If you are here today, those of you that have just come in, work on your credit from today. Do it. When you go home, do it right away. You ask me, how do I work on my credit? That's the question I wanted to ask. Thank you. Sir, if the mama just mentioned 40,000, if she's going to Nigeria, she don't need to sweat it. She used the credit card to buy a plane ticket. You know what? She can use the credit card. She has advantage of about 10% or 20%, 40% cash money to, to ask the credit card to push it to her bank account. That money, it becomes available the same day to her. That is the power of having credit. And that is when you buy something, you pay every month. Not every month. Even if you buy it today, and in three days time you can pay it off, your credit score will st from 350, it will go to 600 right away. When you hit 600, the government is, was giving money to people, American government. He was asking people who have 600 and up, 
and many people were struggling to get it because they didn't have 600. They were, they were literally, they have abused the system. My credit company gave you $2,000. And mama, you finish the money, you don't want to pay. You decide not to pay again. If you don't pay, it will stay in your life for 10 years. I won't say that, I won't say seven years because they will sell it to another company and everybody will start it all over. Don't do it. Because of time, I can't talk much on credit purposes. Maybe next week I'll stretch a little bit, but next week I want to emphasize on how we can help our youth, the young ones, get to their next level in life. Why? Because they are our future for tomorrow. You come listen. You don't need them to come in and listen. You listen and you put them there. I promise you, you give them two, three years, their, their credit will catch up with you. Hear me? There are so many parents that have used their children's credit score. They use them to get apartments. They use their children's credit score to get other things. And they abuse it. So when the child gets to where he has to use it, he's already jumped. He already owns too much because parents abuse them. If I were those parents, I would rather help them get to where they're supposed to get to. When they're about 20 to 25, already they have their home. If somebody is 25 years old and he has his own house, ask him, and he's going to pay the house within 30 years and be done with it. When that child is about 50 years old, he's already good to go. And every 10 years, he can have about 50% equity, that's what they call it, in that home. If he has the equity, he will draw the money, buy another property, and keep going. It's too much to learn and too much to break through in life. You are struggling, you are not supposed to struggle like that. Me, I know, unless you want to go, I'm going to stay here for a while. Hello. Hello. I, I, I am. I'm serious. Let's go bring your family. Are you ready? When I go to Ghana, I'll put them in my bag. And I'll sit them in front. Thank you so much for your time with me here. This is Pastor Isaac. I appreciate you so much. God bless you. Sometime in next week, this coming Sunday, we'll be having an awesome service here. And I'll be inviting you special to join us. And do not forget, after the service, we also have a funeral to attend. We're all going to uh, work with the, the family that are in need. So this is Pastor Isaac. Thank you so much. God bless you. Stand on your feet, every one of you. Put your hands together for Jesus. I appreciate you. Let me pray for you.